Hi, I'm Josh Butler. Welcome to my studio in sunny Warrington. Today I'm going to run through a track called Right Time that I've made for Solid Grooves and show you the process of how it came together and the production side of things. It's the right time. So today I'm going to be running through one of my tracks called Right Time, which is on Solid Grooves. This track um, came around because of the vocal sample that I heard in a podcast. Um, I'll play it for you. I was just in the car listening to a podcast and uh, heard this little vocal. It's the right time. And thought it needs to be a track. So um, came to the studio the next day and recorded it in. Um, and then started to build a drum track around it and you know, just progress things from there really. So once I finished the track, played it out a few times in the club and wasn't really convinced that it was good enough to release. So I actually left it for two or three months, just sat on the hard drive and then um, sent it to a few friends just to see what they thought. And Pauza got back to me and said that he'd been playing it at all of his gigs um, and one in particular at uh, Kaluki in Manchester um, and he said that another the two Dutch guys came over and started taking pictures of the CDJ because they wanted to know what the track was so um, he said he really wanted to release it so you know it had to be done so I'll start um, to break down some of the elements I think once the vocal sample was in it was probably drums that was next. So, um, you know, straight up 4-4 four, four kick drum. Well, the sample is just something that's been on my hard drive since day one. Drum 11 <laughs> with um, some pretty basic EQ. You know, I always like to cut the middle out of my kick drums, five to 700. You know, this one's about 600. 600 hertz, um, which just leaves a little bit more room for some of the other elements, especially like claps, snares, any chords or vocals. I mean, it's, you can hear it's just a little bit more poppy without the, the middle cut. You know, obviously that's all dependent on samples and tracks. Um, so yeah, anyway, kick's pretty simple processing sounding nice and fat. So starting to build some drums on the, on the TR8. There's a nice simple closed hat and an offbeat open hat. You know, everything's recorded in already. And so I actually run all of the signal from this through my uh, outboard effects units. So even before it's gone into the computer, it's already compressed, it's um, saturated, and uh, usually sounding pretty tight. And so there isn't actually much processing that goes on inside the computer for me, apart from some EQ. You know, rolled quite a bit of the top end off here. Um, and then there's another layer of hats, same process. Quick pattern from the TR8, ran through the, the valve compressors. Um, you know, it's got quite a nice swing to it, very loose, nothing too um, mechanical sounding. Just layering more hats and getting the, the rhythm going. You know, again, the, I tr tend not to do too much processing on this sort of thing, because that, um, that will come again later. I, I tend to do like lots of small increments of processing along the way, different stages of it. So there's one on the recording process, some basic in the box processing, and then when the track's finished, I'll run it all out to this valve mixer and um, EQ and tighten things up even more. The swing is um, purely from the, the TR8, just um, 
simple adjustment of the shuffle knob and um, it sounds like two slightly different settings of swing as well you know I mean you solo them like that it, it almost sounds a bit messy but I think um, when it ties the when you tie everything together it helps with the flow you know it helps things sound more natural I never like things to be too um, too quantized I always like things to be quite loose um, okay yeah same same process with the clap sounds nice and tight because it's ran through the drama compressor and then I've actually compressed it in the box as well with this beast so this is a nomad factory quite a hard harsh compressor um, few, few crash symbols you know nothing groundbreaking <laughs> 909 crash Um, so the ride again from the TR8, most of my drums are coming from this thing um, and then I've put some chorus on it to widen things out a little bit, makes it sound a little bit more washy and set back in the mix. A few layers of shakers and a tambourine, tambourines, lots of, lots of drum layers in this track. I'm not going to go through it, each one and explain it because it's it's all the same kind of processing. You know, it's uh, a bit of EQ with the the bottom rolled off for hi hats. Some of the peak frequencies knocked out with a notch filter. Um, yeah, light compression and, and more EQ. Same thing on on everything. Just a minute, the, the EQ is a. Uh, all um, set individually to make sure that things are sitting well. So for example, this one is giving a lot of the high end out, whereas, uh, as I mentioned before, I think it was this one. I'd rolled a lot of the top end off. So when you put them together, it, it gives it more space. There's more room for the sound to, to breathe. Okay, let's break down some of the vocals now. So as I mentioned, it was from a podcast. Just recorded it straight in through my interface. It's the right time. Oh, that's got some of the effects. So that it's the right time. There's the dry version. And if you notice, it's so I think what I would have done is just chop up different sections of the podcast and probably recorded like 10 minutes of it and then um, choose bits that work together and rearrange the order of it. So, you know, it's, I kind of like to take a sentence sometimes and just rearrange whatever they're saying, completely change the meaning of it. So this is just a few phrases that I've chopped and pasted wherever. I think that it's the right time. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, I think it's this part. It's the right time. It's the right time. Yeah, just again, just copy and pasted a little bit of it and duplicated it. Just to keep things interesting. Um, and I can't imagine there's much processing on this either, to be honest. It sounds quite good already. Just a bit of light distortion from the decapitator. And then again, rolled off the bottom end with a fab filter. Knocked out some of the peak frequencies. Um, but this section is something I like to do a lot. <laughs> so I would have, um, I would have got the vocal, the dry vocal, turned on the warp and uh, stretched it out a little bit. I'm just going to try and recreate something quick. Stutter the vocal a little bit like this and then I send it out through the interface and into this uh, Korg Chaos Pad 
which can just mash up vocals into something completely different. Lots of cool reverbs and delays on this thing. Um, so that's this is the end product of the the chaos pad with a bit of low pass filter on. Low pass filter and chorus. And that just sits in the background of the mix and uh, helps to build the track a little bit more. Keep the vocal familiar as well. It's the right time. Especially in breakdowns, I like to use this. You know, you can see the automation on the low pass filter. Have you noticed it's the right time? Okay, so that's the vocal. Um, let's move on to the bass. Bass doesn't have to be anything too complicated, I don't think, as long as it sounds punchy and carries the track through. <clears throat> Especially in, you know, house music is not about overcomplicating things, for me anyway. Nice and simple, dance floor tracks. So two notes on the bass um, from Operator, Ableton's own FM synth. Um, yeah, the Hot Tubes preset from Saturator, which is wicked. I highly recommend that one. Uh, so <clears throat> that's probably the only preset I'd use from uh, Saturator. Then I've used the Nomad Factory compressor again. And, uh, and the Fab Filter. So that's the sub layer of the bass. And then there's a more mid-range bass, which came from my TB3, or TB03. Let me, let me dig it out of the drawer. From this thing. So I would have just programmed a few notes in, in the same key as the track, you know, to follow the bass line. And then um, hit record at the beginning of the track. Again, running through all of the valve gear and just do a couple of takes of me arrange, uh, adjusting filters and resonance, some of the decay, just to, to give it some variation. And I think it just fills out the bottom end a little bit more, gives it a, a fuller sound. Yep, some side chain on that as well, just so we're not clashing with the kick drum. Um, and that is about it for drums and bass, really. As long as you get the kick and the bass sitting correctly together, you can uh, start adding things on top. Anything else in the middle and on the top of your kick and bass is a bonus. So that got me to... Uh, got me to this point. Nice little groover. The right time. But I felt like it needed a little bit more, it needed some other element to um, just keep it interesting and roll the track along. So I yeah, went for a kind of signature chord sound that I, I'm a bit of a sucker for using these soulful chords that have been filtered and dubbed out, lots of echo and delay and stuff. So it's, it's actually just uh, one hit of a chord from a loop. I'm not actually using this bit, it's just the first the right hit. Time. Right time. Um, possibly pitched, yeah, knocked down a few semitones and filtered with some automation and velocity. And again, lots more automation on right send effects. Like I was saying, reverbs and delays. Um, echoes that are fed back into themselves to create that dub reggae sort of space. So the the pitching sound in the background is actually from this reverb unit, the Rack Shack, 
really like rough sounding, um, again, kind of like reggae sounding reverb. So I've just changed the decay time on it and um, yeah, drew in some automation curves to suit the progression of the track. Can hear the, the vocal and the chord are both going through that. Okay, a couple of extra little chord hits there. Just for variation. Let me tell you something. It's the right time. Some more chaos pad bits. Lots of dubby effects. Creates a nice build up. All these sounds were from the original source from that chord sample. Okay, so that's the chords um, with the effects through the chaos pad and whatnot. Next thing was um, some effects, you know, some white noise sweeps and maybe a snare roll. <clears throat> Let's see, a string for the breakdowns. This is probably the cheapest string sample in the world, but I use it in every single track because it's, it's just really rough. Um, I think it was from a Hacienda sample pack. So I've just given it a simple automation curve on the volume in a simpler. Um, I mean, it's very, very subtle in the mix, but it's there. Let me tell you something. In fact, a lot of these effects, this, this whole effects group is very uh, quiet in the mix by the look of it. You can hear the snare building up, but... Have you noticed? I mean, these things really do sit in the background and just create a bit of atmosphere and some space. Which is... Uh, the same as this thing, you know, uh, I'm all about creating a, like a kind of environment or a, an, an atmosphere in the background of a track rather than just having <coughs> straight up drums and, you know, rather than just having the elements of a track, having a bed in the background that helps uh, create a space. So this is just a breath, you know, possibly from the same podcast, I can't remember. I think there's some side chain on there and some EQ. So yeah, these effects, um, a little bit of reverb from Ableton's built-in reverb unit. The snare was from the TR8 again. Um, and of course, mixed through the compressors. So there's just an EQ on there. Looks like I was messing around with a gate, but uh, whatever, that got muted. And then um, I think that the last thing would have been just to uh, EQ the bottom end off the send effects, which I think is, well, on some of them, um, especially reverbs, I like to just knock off all of the the bass frequencies, just so things are being kept tidy, you know. Because mixes can get a little bit muddy if you're starting to send drums through reverbs, you know. I've, I've, I have like experimenting with kick drums, putting reverb on kick drums now, again to create space, but it can get very messy in the mix, so you've just got to be careful of what frequencies, frequencies are being sent through those units. Once the track is finished and arranged, in the box and mixed, you know, to a certain extent in there, you know, as you've seen, it's all pretty basic processing. Um, I will then split the track into different stems, bounce it all out as audio. So drums, bass, vocal, chords, send effects, and then um, patch it into this mixer. 
So, um, yeah, I'll bring the, the drums up on a couple of channels and then, you know, all the stems will be split across different channels and then EQ'd accordingly. Um, and I actually have some reverb and uh, delay guitar pedals on the send effects of this mixer. It's got a, a send and return one and two. So, um, you know, that just helps, again, build space and a, a bit of atmosphere um, and sounds great through this analog mixer as well. Really gives it some sort of uh, harmonic distortion that can't be created inside the computer. It's all old tubes and valves inside this thing. So once it's all EQ'd and uh, the levels are balanced nicely, um, you know, which can sometimes take a full afternoon, I'll probably do three or four different takes of it and at different levels and different EQs and stuff, get things sounding nice and tight and punchy, and then I'll record it back into the computer just as two um, stereo channels, left and right, and that's the pre-master. So that is what's then sent to the label or the mastering engineer as the final product. That's about it really. Very simple track. I think it was probably made in two, three hours tops. Um, the, the original project is actually called Rush Hour because I was in here waiting. I was, I was meant to be driving to Manchester and it was rush hour, so I just thought I'd kill some time, start a track, and uh, sat in here and just waited for the traffic to die down. And this is the result. Thanks for joining me today and coming to my studio, seeing how I make music. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. Follow me on social media if you want to keep up to date on anything else. I'm always posting other studio videos and little production hints and stuff. See you soon.